Hey guys, the world's still ending, so let's talk about VTubers. In late 2019, VTubers were still niche outside of Japan. People were aware of VTubers, like how I'm aware of the sodium content in Auntie Anne's pretzel dogs. But no matter how you slice it, the concept just hadn't gotten its hooks in the global audience yet. And then something, something, 2020. COVID-19 really fucked us up in a lot of ways, but one weird phenomenon that I don't think has been fully explored is the global spike in VTuber popularity. Of course, since shutdowns forced many people indoors, there was an overall increase in internet usage, but I don't think that fully explains why people from all around the world flocked to this specific subculture. I think if we want to understand how this decade-defining tragedy affected our media, we should first look at how past events impacted media. So let's wind the clock back to September 11, 2001. The 9-11 terrorist attacks were possibly the defining moment of the 21st century for the US. They heralded a new era of war and an atmosphere of security and paranoia. It's because of 9-11 that all air travelers are now presumed to be terrorists until proven otherwise. So, obviously, this traumatic event changed what stories we told. I think there's an almost primal desire in trying times to find comfort in storytelling. Numerous articles and books have been published that interrogate how the trauma of 9-11 led Americans to pursue fantasies of righteous violence and vigilantism through a boom in superhero films and comics. The feelings of powerlessness that 9-11 created manifested in invincible heroes who could defeat any evil that might threaten peace and stability. There's a socioeconomic theory called the Wave Principle, based on a book written in the 1930s. It's based around the idea that market trends cycle through waves based on the overall mood of a society. And this theory was later applied to pop culture and how films can also reflect the stock market. Because popular films are an extremely good indicator of our national or global mood what stories we want to see, like how the Great Depression coincided with the rise of musicals, and so on. And it doesn't take a degree to look at how back in 2001, America was attacked in the previously unfathomable terrorist act resulting in the death of thousands, an event that shocked the entire world. And then immediately after that, we started making countless movies about invulnerable people single-handedly stopping extreme threats. This tendency, I think, might be repeating itself in the time of COVID. Dan Olson's video, I Can't Stop Watching Contagion, explores the sudden popularity of the 2011 film, which captivated quarantined audiences with its depiction of a society brought to its knees by a global pandemic not unlike COVID. Dan explains that he sees his contagion binging as a form of emotional inoculation against the trauma and social isolation of COVID-19. So, why do I watch VTubers then? Well, first let's talk about virtuality and body image. The documentary The Illusionists explains how, in the modern age, numerous industries from fashion to skincare to dieting have used thinner models and software enhancement and also just plain old lying to manufacture extreme standards of beauty. This was already horrifying to see, but then they mentioned how the bodies of fashion models have become virtual. And then I was like, oh shit, it's like VTubers. So we've already been crafted into a generation obsessed with our own bodies, from fashion magazine body horror to Snapchat filters. And then COVID hits and now we're all indoors, working from home and eating boxes of frozen pretzel dogs. The point is, lockdown kinda sucked if maintaining a perfect body was important to you. It also just sucked in general. Don't own a home gym? Well, if you haven't spent a thousand dollars on a Marcy Smith cage workout machine total body training home gym system with linear bearing exercise kit, good luck. So a lot of people started worrying about gaining the COVID-15, and that makes me wonder, why? Here's a word that I spent $160 to learn. Healthism. Healthism is the idea that each individual is personally responsible for their own health, that unhealthiness is a moral failing. 
A related term is medicalization, the way that medical categories are constructed out of whole cloth to offer simple, scientific solutions to any and all human problems. Since medicalization is basically a means of enforcing healthism, it's really that they're two sides of the same coin. Medicalization is about the increasing use of medical theories, concepts, and frameworks to explain social phenomena, social differences, and behaviors. It is about the desocialization of disease. The medicalization of obesity in the media has resulted in the association of obesity with biological and behavioral factors such as genetics or poor food choices, which warrant medicalized solutions in the form of medication or bariatric surgery. These ideas aren't new though. For decades, neoliberal healthism, especially in the US, has sought to address obesity in particular as an individual moral failing and devalue the lives of obese people. It's like how we all kind of know that lobbyists have so completely fucked us that canned corn probably has more high fructose corn syrup than actual corn, but we're still conditioned to look at fatness as something to be solved by personal dieting and eating healthy. But I can't eat VTubers yet, so why am I talking about healthism? Glad I asked. Considering all that I've talked about, what then are VTubers if not the ultimate aspirational figure for a society obsessed with individual health? VTubers are, generally speaking, conventionally attractive. The bodies that attract millions of viewers are mostly in line with the constructed images of the fashion and beauty industries. Not only that, but the VTuber's body is immortal. A VTuber doesn't die, they just graduate. A VTuber lives in a virtual world, divorced from the horrors of the pandemic. The act of viewing, of participation, constructs the VTuber as the perfect COVID superhero. I see VTubers and I see, first and foremost, healthy bodies, or at least the performance of healthy bodies. This isn't to say that VTubers can't get sick, because they do. They're human. But the VTuber model doesn't reflect their real health. It's the performance that matters. Like popcorn superhero movies, the point is our ability to find comfort in the depiction of a world where someone does have this power. We find comfort in these fictional and virtual worlds because in our current media landscape, it's hard to find that kind of comfort in the news or politics. Let's look at another side of this public performance of health. Joe Rogan contracted COVID-19 and then went on video to detail an extensive cocktail of drugs and how he felt great. Then President Donald Trump was infected and despite looking visibly ill, staged photo ops in a drive in a sealed off car to assure his followers that he was still strong. Trump's infection was likely due to his refusal to wear a face mask, and face masks have become an infuriating controversy. The simple surgical mask has become a sign of weakness, so many people, especially men, have begun performatively rejecting masks, fueled by a mostly right-wing misinformation apparatus. They're not weak, they're strong, they're masculine, they're unafraid, and many are now dead. The same kind of cycle is playing out with vaccines. The appearance, the performance of health has, to many, become more important than the actual state of being healthy. The VTuber, to me, is a manifestation of this medicalization of our society. I am powerless, and yet the people with power, the government, and the capitalists that control it, have washed their hands of the responsibility to keep me alive. I can't divorce the appeal of VTubers from the fear of illness, the fear of appearing ill or vulnerable that the pandemic has enhanced. Our politicians claim that the pandemic is over, and yet every day, hundreds if not thousands die of an illness that might have been prevented if swifter action had been taken in the weeks and months and even years that were spent denying its existence. An anti-vaccine movement has taken root in the first world where governments are scrambling to give out booster shots, and yet impoverished countries that have been made poor by incessant monetary and material exploitation remained for agonizing months at the back of the line for first doses. So at the end of the day, what's the point? 
Is there a point to critically analyzing media when the loudest voices in the room are deeply uncritical, proudly ignorant, and a danger to themselves and others? I think so. A lot of the attempts to spread accurate information about the pandemic and other social issues are foiled because facts simply aren't enough. In this modern media environment, I think that the brain sometimes prefers finding comfort in entertainment media like VTubers, and maybe thinking deeper about these superficially silly concepts is a good starting point for larger and more serious discussions. I don't think watching VTubers is a bad response to the pandemic. Yes, it's just an illusion, the performance of health, but maybe an illusion is what the brain needs to fully comprehend and cope with a disaster like COVID. I think that VTubers have a great potential to illuminate these facets of our world, the ways in which we're shaped by and in turn shape our media. I interrogated my interest in VTubers from 2020 onwards because it's always good to think critically about why you like what you like do what you do, and want what you want. So in conclusion, stay safe, and have a wonderful day. Hey, thanks for watching the whole video. I know I haven't uploaded new videos recently, and I will try to get them out faster. I recently um, started a new job, and it's going well. And so I think that pretty soon I'll have a lot more um, time to spare to start researching more videos, so do look forward to that. I'm going to be making more about VTubers and expanding more into uh, anime and games as much as I can, as much as I feel comfortable with. So if you're interested in that, look forward to that. If not, I will be making more VTuber stuff. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I guess since you're here, leave a comment, let me know that you watch the whole thing. I really like it when people watch the whole video. I feel like it, it, it makes it all worthwhile. So really, thank you. Have a wonderful day.